Hello, everyone. Thank you, Dean Seti, for that introduction. I want to start by greeting you all with the greeting I know best. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace and blessings be upon you all. My name is Fatma Musa Muhammad, and I come to you all from the rich soil of Yemen raised by the humble streets of Queens. It is my honor and I'm humbled to be standing before you all as a selected class speaker, daytime speaker of the class of 2023. <laughs> to all our loved ones, our parents, grandparents, siblings, partners, and friends, our comrades, aunts and uncles, and all the little kids in the crowd, those who made it and those who couldn't, we wouldn't be here without you. Thank you for your unwavering love. My mom's crying, so that means that's. <laughs> Thank you for your unwavering love and support. This celebration is yours. This is a moment for those who paved the way for us to be here, those who wiped down our tears, those who are waiting ahead, and to those we now must open the doors. And now to the graduating class of 2023. Before I begin, I want to tell you all that my grandparents are in Yemen right now and they assured me that there are fireworks lighting up the city of Aden in celebration of all of us. So just know that oceans away, there's a whole city on the other end of the earth, if you like, celebrating you all. Of 2023, the moment we have all been waiting for is finally here. The class that began this journey during a season of grief, a season where ambulance trucks were the only noise in town and our neighborhoods became sort of ghost towns, where we watched our immigrant parents keep the city on its feet as they saw bodies packed into refrigerated morgue trucks. The class that saw nothing but black Zoom square boxes for the first two years, there's a lot I can say about the loss and the pain we've all endured over the last few years, but I am reminded of France Fanon's words. Things get bad for all of us, almost continually, and what we do under the constant stress reveals who and what we are. And so I'm here to celebrate who and what we are, who you are. Like many of you, I chose CUNY School of Law for its articulated mission to be law in the service of human needs. One of very few legal institutions created to recognize that the law is a manifestation of white supremacy that continues to oppress and suppress people in this nation and around the world. We join this institution. We join this institution to be equipped with the necessary legal skills to protect our communities to protect the organizers fighting endlessly day in and out with no accolades, no cameras, no votes, no PhD grants, working to lift the facade of legal neutrality and confront the systems of oppression that wreak violence on them. Systems of oppression created to feed an empire with a ravenous appetite for destruction and violence. Institutions created to intimidate, bully, and censor and stifle the voices of those who resist. In this moment, in this moment of celebrating who we are, I want to celebrate CUNY Law as one of the few, if not the only law school, to make a public statement defending the right of its students to organize and speak out against Israeli settler colonialism. <laughs> that passed and endorsed BDS on a student and faculty level. Yeah. Recognizing that absent a critical imperialism, settler colonialism lens, our work and this school's mission statement is void of value. That as Israel continues to indiscriminately rain bullets and bombs on worshipers, murdering the old, the young, 
attacking even funerals and graveyards as it encourages lynch mobs to target Palestinian homes and businesses as it imprisons its children as it continues its project of settler colonialism expelling Palestinians from their homes carrying the ongoing Nakba that our silent is no, that our silence is no longer acceptable the student body and faculty that fought back when investor-focused admin attempted to cross the BDS picket.